and 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 for a, for a citizen who has been yeah. uh, reading the media yeah. um, and uh, the various yeah. pronouncements coming out from uh, the central yeah. bank of yeah. late um, it's difficult to ascertain really what's going on i mean uh, there might be a, one might term a crisis of confidence mm -hmm. Because you get mixed messaging, for example, with regards to our, our financial health, our macroeconomic growth, uh, the necessity for a bailout, what conditions there might be uh, for our collective future and our children, what burden they will have to inherit. You know, one doesn't get a sense of what is what is out there. You know, what what dangers, what challenges there are. Uh, is this a, a failure in communication, or is it just that it's so opaque even for a central bank to ascertain? No, I don't think it's opaque, and I understand where you're coming from because I, 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 I do uh, confess that having been a former central banker, these questions are often posed to me. And I think part of the problem is uh, uh, one thing that, uh, because having worked there and having dealt with the numbers, if I want to get information, I know exactly where to go hmm. on the websites. Hmm. And both these institutions that I mentioned have very good websites, mm. and the information is there. Mm. And also, because of having worked with the numbers, uh, when I see a number that I, I have problems with accepting, I know where to do, go to cross-check. Sure. Uh, so uh, I have that advantage. Uh, having said that, uh, I also... Uh, think that if you know where to go, then you can draw your own conclusions. You do not have to always uh, accept um, the, the presentation that is given by mm. any of the authorities. You can make your own conclusions. And I think on the one hand, what I have noticed, and I've mentioned this in other interviews, is that uh, sometimes in recent years, especially the last few years, I do accept the countries uh, fighting a war. Uh, there are lots of problems, there are uh, e extra expenditures that we have to face but, and as a result maybe the authorities want to maintain <coughs> excuse me, the confidence of the people. But I also think that if you carry that line too far and you lose credibility, mm. then the people themselves begin to speculate and they will speculate on Worst. negatives and, and yeah. uh, there will be an overreaction. Mm. So I think, in my view, I don't know what the authorities feel, it is much better to, when you're, when you're um, presenting uh, the, the picture, to also focus on the negatives, because nothing is ever perfect. Mm. And also say that we have concerns, say, for example, at the moment in Sri Lanka, <coughs> we do have a serious external payments problem. It's not crisis, but it is serious. And that is why the country has uh, gone for a 1.9 billion standby arrangement with the IMF. <coughs> and um, if you look on the IMF website, they have different kinds of lending facilities. We are going for, as the government has stated, for a standby arrangement. Now, a standby arrangement is given by the IMF for short term, to tide over short term balance of payments problems. That's what the loan is for, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, <coughs> I read a um, press release recently which referred to the 1.9 billion and spoke about it being used for the development of that's, the North that's, and the East and everything. That's not now we will need funds once not. this war is over, but the IMF has uh, what they call emergency assistance for countries that are coming out of a war situation. Sure. They have extended fund facilities. There are different are, mechanisms. Yes. Right. So in that context, I think um, even when it was presented by the authorities, it may have been better to say this is what a standby arrangement is. We do have these uh, concerns because the avenues that we were borrowing from commercial loans are not available because of the global liquidity crisis. Mm. So I think... Uh, and also, I mean, uh, in the... Con the one, uh, uh, it, it's better to explain some of this because otherwise people uh, are already speculating on, on what this loan is going to be used for. Um, if we are talking about, yeah. as you hinted at, um, yeah. a post-war Sri Lanka yeah. after this year. Yes. Um, help us understand what, what, would, what that would entail 
in, in mean economically? Um, I think uh, I can only give my own interpretation and my own uh, priorities on where I think we should be moving. I think um, the government has been, uh, whether or not you or I may agree with the military, uh, military um, offensive, offensive yeah. uh, to solve the problem, they have been successful in, in, in bringing the country under one administration. There's a little more to go. And I think after that really will come uh, the, 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 the big decision making on uh, what to do. Now there are so many areas sure. on which the government will have to focus. And um, I'm hoping that they have a very clear plan because one of the problems when you come out of that kind of crisis is yeah. where to prioritize. Right. To, in my mind, I think there are two very important areas they will have to focus on. And uh, this thinking comes from the fact that in my work in the Central Bank as Director of Statistics, we did uh, surveys that took us all around the country. And uh, we could see the development process. And uh, one of my uh, keen interests is in terms of uh, making use of the information towards uh, raising the quality of life of our people. And in that context, I think, one, the government has got that very right infrastructure. And when I say infrastructure, um, uh, I don't only mean the roads and the bridges and the ports. I also mean uh, energy. Uh, electricity, water supply, and uh, the softer infrastructure, uh, the, sorry, the infrastructure that is going to support the, the soft skills development, which is education and health. So knowledge capital as well. Knowledge capital. Yeah. And I think the two areas the government really needs to focus on are education and improving the entire uh, system of uh, the roads, etc. If you take uh, a look at post-war, post-conflict, yeah. particularly protracted post-conflict scenarios, yeah. Anila, the, the, the crisis of confidence is this, and it yeah. is that there is the expectation of short-term gain, whereas really what you've just outlined is long -term. a long-term. Now, how do you manage that? How, how can a government manage that? Well, that, that, that's a tough call for a government because if you look at Sri Lanka, actually when you look at the resources we have in terms of natural resources, the advantages that come from being an island, the advantages that come from being multicultural, multi-religious, uh, of having a, uh, a very sound um, education and health structure, um, what has happened in, ever since independence is that really the, the thinking span has been the time between sure. two elections. Yes, and that's plastering. where our problem yeah. is. I mean, yeah. we've had all of Southeast Asia, which we were ahead of, moved way ahead of us because uh, the, the political uh, reality overtakes everything else. So on just on the point, you're hopeful yeah. that this will change? Yes. Okay. So I'm hoping that at least now that we have gone through such crisis that there will be, <laughs> you, you look very cynical <laughs> when I say that, I live in hope and optimism <laughs> that we will, that the government will take some serious decisions and, all, you know, this government has been brilliant in its, in its uh, communications, its 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 uh, what shall I say? Propaganda machine is superb, mm. and it has managed to take the people along with it. With inflation as high as almost thirty percent, people are still saying we are winning a war. Because we have a commitment to, to yes, be made. there is a commitment. Yeah. So I'm hoping that they will use that same propaganda machine and that same ability to convince the people that now we need to think long term. And when I spoke about the priorities of infrastructure and education, I think superseding all that is to build the trust and confidence of the minority people and to to heal minds because there is so much of uh, uh, division on ethnic lines, on religious lines that has come through the last few years. It's, to me, it's really tragic.